First up, this Monday on CNN Student News, apparent acts of terrorism on U.S. soil. I'm Carl Azus. Let's go. Police in Manhattan, an island and a borough of New York City, are hunting for whoever set off an explosion that injured 29 people on Saturday night. They'd all been released from hospitals by the next morning. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said it was obviously an act of terrorism, but that it happened when there was no specific threat against New York City from any terrorist organizations. We will find who planted these explosives, and they will be punished. You heard him say explosives. Police believe the one that went off was hidden in or near a dumpster, and officials found another device a few blocks away, a pressure cooker with wires and a cell phone attached to it. Police didn't know for certain if it was connected to the device that went off nearby. They're also investigating whether any of this is linked to a separate explosion Saturday morning in New Jersey. It went off in a garbage can along the route of a U.S. Marine Corps charity run. But the run had been delayed, and there was no one nearby or hurt in that blast. There were several people wounded, though, in an apparent terrorist attack at a mall in Minnesota Saturday. A man stabbed nine people at the Crossroads Mall in St. Cloud before he was shot and killed by police. Part of the Islamic State, or ISIS, terrorist group claimed it was responsible for that attack. Next story. On September 9th, in a rural county in Alabama, a leak was found in a gasoline pipeline. Around 250,000 gallons of gas had spilled, and the pipeline was closed. But the effects are rippling up the U.S. East Coast because this particular pipeline provides gasoline for an estimated 50 million people each day. Some gas stations have run out of fuel, and because the pipeline might not be fully functional until later this week, Ships are sailing with gas from Texas to New York, and more tanker trucks are expected on the road. Pipelines are by far the cheapest way to move gas or oil, so prices are going up as supply goes down. An analyst from GasBuddy.com says prices could increase by 15 cents per gallon in some places. The governors of Alabama and Georgia have declared states of emergency. Oil is not for the faint of heart. Black gold has made fortunes for some, but its price volatility leaves destruction in its wake. Here are some of the biggest oil booms and busts of the last century. One of the earliest oil price shocks of the transportation era was the West Coast gasoline famine of 1920. Demand for oil was surging as more people started driving automobiles. Consumption almost doubled from 1915 to 1920. That led to a shortage in gasoline. Autos were out of commission and horses back in style. After 1920, oil production in the U.S. boomed in Texas, Oklahoma, California. That meant no more shortages, increased supply, and falling prices down 40% between 1920 and 1926, then tossed the Great Depression in the mix. Prices fell another 66% by 1931. Throughout the world, throngs of people hailed the end of the war in Europe. After World War II, people were demanding more petroleum-based products and buying more cars. The price of oil increased 80% from 1945 to 1947. In 1960, OPEC was founded. The coordination of supply from these countries led to relatively stable prices for the next decade. Just after Syria and Egypt attacked Israel in 1973, OPEC announced an embargo on all oil exports to countries viewed as supporting Israel, including the United States. Oil prices doubled and then doubled again, and drivers waited in long lines just to fill up their tanks. Iran was one of the largest oil producers in the world in 1978, but the revolution in that country hurt production, and the country has never fully recovered. The price of oil, already historically high, pretty much doubled again, and in the U.S., the lines for gas were back. If you haven't noticed already, when there's conflict in the Middle East, oil prices go up. That's what happened in 1990, and again when the U.S. invaded Iraq in 2003. 
growing demand for oil was booming at the beginning of the 21st century. China was guzzling crude, and the U.S. economy was in a bubble. Despite signs of a global recession underway, oil peaked at $147 a barrel in 2008. It helped put the brakes on the economy just before the financial crisis brought it all crashing down. And today, too many players pumping too much oil and concerns about China's slowing growth have sent oil prices into a tailspin. How will this bust stack up with others from the last hundred years? An act of protest by an American pro football player is dividing people on fields and in living rooms across the U.S. Colin Kaepernick is the backup quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. Over the summer, he made headlines for refusing to stand while the U.S. national anthem is played. At first, he sat on a bench. Later, he took a knee, and he continues to kneel during the anthem at regular season games. Kaepernick says that he's not anti-American, but that he's doing this to protest what he sees as the mistreatment of African Americans and minorities in the U.S. His protest has been joined by some other NFL players, while the majority of players continue to stand during the anthem. The NFL says the anthem is an opportunity to honor America, but that an individual has the right to participate or not in the celebration. Some critics say they agree with Kaepernick's message, but not his method of protest by kneeling during the anthem. Others call the protest disrespectful, saying this isn't the time or the place to do it. Political football has a whole new meaning. What began in the NFL with 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick is now showing up under the glare of Friday Night Lights. We do think about the consequences that could happen after the game. I'm gonna get booze and negative energy and stuff like that. But it's like it really don't matter if if it's right, then it's right. While the protest is catching on in some high schools across the country, that is not what has happened at Colin Kaepernick's old high school. During his alma mater's game, the national anthem played. Hands were over hearts, and every player stood stick straight. But their hometown football standouts protest has sparked controversy and conversation in Turlock, California. I think it was、uh, really disrespectful, and I think、uh, I think he's an idiot. At Main Street Footers, the once popular Kaepernick dog has been stricken from the menu. Glenn Newsom says it was a business decision that most of his customers agreed with. One of the nice things about our country is you get to make choices, but we didn't want it to become a political football. But down the street at Jura's Pizza Parlor, Kaepernick's jersey is proudly displayed. Here within Turlock, loyalty is a lot. Every the community is very loyal, so we're going to stay loyal to again our hometown boy as his career continues. Fabiola Agassi says she is supporting their hometown guy, not the way he has decided to protest. Is his protest? Creating friction in this town. Yes, yes. There are、um, locals that support him, and there are locals that don't support him. Like Navy veteran Veronica Mora. I was very disgusted and disappointed. It it hurt. It hurt. You know, like I said, I believe in the flag. I believe in the United States of America. Ultimately, the hardworking, growing town of Turlock, California, is a microcosm of the rest of America. Before we go, yoga with goats, and I don't mean the greatest of all time. I mean farm animals. Goat yoga. The woman who started it says it's a great distraction from politics, war, and the way the world is right now.、And、there's apparently a waiting list of 500 people to do it. One participant says the animals have been running all over the mats and trying to eat the mats and headbutting people, and that it's been so much fun. Unless, of course. Losing your equipment gets your goat. In which case, it sounds like a bad idea. But for those who find it meditative, it just can't be bleat. You just got to keep your chin up, make room in it for others, and always be patient with the kids. I'm Carl Azus, and that's CNN Student News.